Richard Cottingham is a control freak and a master manipulator. Since 1980, he's been in jail, and every aspect of his life is out of his control, except for what comes out of his mouth. He wanted to control everything. He wanted to control the narrative of how he talked about these murders. And of course, you know, that lent itself to how he committed these murders. These murders were all about that sexual sadist that was controlling these women, these young girls. And he would torture them, he would control them, and ultimately kill them. Richard always refused to tell me when his first homicide occurred. He never wanted me to know that timeline of when he started to kill. What year is the first, do you think? Do you have it in your head, or you have no idea? I can knock it down to one or two years. What do you think? How far back? 67. 60, maybe the end of 66. 67. It's a lot of years of running around. A lot of states still. Yeah. Do you have any, do you have a number in your head that you think? Did you ever, did you ever sit back and think about it? It's sad to say I, I couldn't count that high. They, they, they start to get jumbled. I would say there's well over 80. You think that many? Well over. Yeah. I done some in Florida, Connecticut, Florida, New York, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Baltimore. And any place within driving distance that was not connected to me, I would try. Uh, my whole thing was not to make a pattern, which I never did. Not, and never to try to kill him the exact same way or to, you know, leave a signature. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't stupid, you know. When it comes to interview and interrogation techniques, you know, when it came down to someone like Richard Cottingham, the rules like kind of all went out the window. Bringing him in and reading him his Miranda rights and using investigative techniques that people have used forever was clearly not going to work with him. Had I thought he was only responsible for one homicide, ordinarily, I would go after the killer about every facet of the, the crime. In his instance, I felt like that would backfire uh, on our long-term relationship that I was trying to cultivate. We would need to take a different approach with him, kind of go off the cuff a little bit. That was the thing with me. I, I wasn't. I wasn't a serial killer. It, it, no, it, you just told me you think he killed eight, over eight. Yeah. That, that fits the definition pretty well. No, it doesn't. But I know what you say, because you've told me in the past. There's been many more that you let go. Hundreds. Yeah. In other words, I didn't go out to kill somebody. M most anyone I killed was when I would be somehow connected to them, and I didn't want to get caught. It was more a thing just not getting caught. Uh, you know, I'm just thinking about myself. What do you mean connected? Meaning like somebody might have seen her get well, like in the car or... Yeah, like in the Bergen Mall. You know, I walked around the mall. I walked in the parking lot, walked, followed her into the parking lot. Anybody could have sit in the car. To me, in my mind, I don't know if anybody's seen me. I think every killer has their own kind of moral code that they don't want to get past. And in, in his particular case, I think he long buried how brutal he was to women in the recesses of his mind. And he constantly downplayed what he did to them. You know, we all had children. We had young girls that were the same age as some of his victims. And, you know, that makes you sick. You know, it really can make you angry at him. And you want to just shut the door and you want to walk out. But the truth of the matter is, is that we were doing this for a, a greater good. So however much that he would disgust us, we would go back and continue and just keep that dialogue going. Like I can tell you, one time in Atlantic City, I met a girl in, in, the, uh, in the resorts. She went with me, and I brought her back up here. In my mind, hey, I could be on a camera down there or whatever. So those were the ones I couldn't leave. But if, if the girl wasn't dangerous to me, 
I never, I, ne I never went out to kill. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't say, I said I'm not really like a standard serial killer. I didn't, I didn't get a no joy in that song, and that's the truth. Never had no joy. It was very hard. So what was the thrill? Was it more rape? Control? Tying no, up? No, the, the, the game. It was being able to get away with it. The stalking. The, the, to be able to, to be able to do it, it was like the perfect murder every time. You can tell he enjoyed this. He enjoyed the, uh, the control over these women. He also liked the fact that the police weren't able to catch him, following a girl into Sears and Hackensack, you know, making, meeting girls on the roadside. The problem was that with young girls back in these days, they were a little bit easier to engage in conversation than now. They would be hitchhiking. They weren't as acutely aware as what was really out there as is now. But he, make no mistake about it, Richard loved what he was doing. There is not a chance in hell that Richard Cottingham is going to come to some epiphany and say, I may die soon, so let me cleanse my soul. It's never going to happen. The only time Richard confesses is when there's something in it for Richard. So I don't think we're ever going to learn of all of his crimes, from his mouth anyway.